Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 3DD podcast or welcome if it's your first time joining us here. Either way, I value your time very much. So thank you for spending it with me on the podcast. Um, today, uh, uh, today's podcast is Nicole Shapiro. I really got to sneeze, but it's not like coming. You ever have that happen to you? <coughs> ah, there it is. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Uh, this episode of the podcast is Nicole Shapiro and Shaps and Shaps Productions. Hashtag and Shaps produced it. Uh, very, very talented um, young videographer, uh, freelancer, uh, extraordinaire, uh, very much on the come up and very much killing the game. Uh, so I was very happy to have her sit down with me. Uh, and uh, also, I mean, uh, just, uh, be a friend and, you know, and, uh, be a pal and, uh, and support me, uh, as we support each other on, uh, all of our, uh, creative ventures. Uh, this was, uh, I have an unbelievable conversation. Um, and I, I had such a great time to talk, get into, you know, talk on that deeper level with her because I mean, you're going to hear there's, there's, I mean, I say it too, uh, at the beginning, there's a lot of, uh, before, before doing the show, I kind of had the suspicion that there was a lot that we had a lot of similarities in our, in our, you know, in our story, uh, and in our progression through the world of creative freelancing, uh, n- not, as it was way more than I even realized, uh, you know, we, we have, we had very much a lot of things in common, uh, and a lot of shared experiences and it was really nice. It was very therapeutic to kind of just sit down and talk it through. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot in here that's, uh, addresses that very much addresses the whole idea of, of burnout, uh, with work creatively and how to deal, how we dealt with it. Um, you know, not to say yeah, you'll, you'll hear it too. You know, we're not, we, we aren't experts, right? The way that we handled it. It's just how we handled it. We're not trying to say it's right or wrong. In fact, I probably handled it all wrong, but anyways, uh, we'll leave that for the show. Uh, I just want to say thank you real quick for a very successful launch with a lot of supports uh, and a lot of very nice comments. I appreciate every single one of them. So thank you so, so much for being a supporter of the show and of everything that I do as always. Uh, I can't figure out enough ways to say thank you. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoy the show today. Uh, you can uh, you can find uh, and, um, uh, you can find Shaps at nshaps.prod on Instagram for her professional um, portfolio. So this is her website and shaps.com and uh, everything that she's doing, you can find on her Instagram or on her website, uh, including how to get in touch with her for, for, uh, for hiring her and, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, uh, enjoy the show. Um, let me, and let me know how you're listening to the podcast. Are you one of these, you know, the, I listen to podcasts in my car a lot. Um, and sometimes when I'm like getting changed and getting warmed up at the gym before I turn my music on. So yeah, let me know how you, uh, how you, um, listen to your podcast and uh, also what platforms you're getting your podcast from. I know right now I'm only on two. So if there's another way that you'd like to, uh, uh, for me to pursue as another avenue for posting the podcast, please let me know, uh, you know, leave a comment or, uh, you know, send me a DM on, uh, DM on Instagram, email, however you want to do it. And, uh, yeah, uh, enjoy episode number two of the three DD podcast with and Shaps Productions beginning in three, two. Okay, I'm okay. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I was gonna say like the, I, I was like I was driving down here. Obviously, it's nighttime, so like I don't know exactly where we are. I just put in the address that I drove because I was in a hurry to get here. But I'm like, I, I don't even really know what neighborhood we're in because I'm just like because when you told me you're like I'm getting, I'm ordering pierogies I'm like from fucking where <laughs> I was like what pierogi places are around there yeah it's like right down the street you can keep eating it if you want to no I'm okay <laughs> I, I don't want to finish out all of it because of dance but yeah we're like Trinity Bell Woods I guess like that's like there oh you're right you're right you're right so, oh yeah 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 how far are you it took me like this is so weird I'm like holding it like <laughs> <laughs> this is podcasting this is podcasting yeah you know well okay. I mean, when you when your setup y'all setup uh gets done professionally um like these have stands be, 
Yeah. Usually. Well, I mean, usually these have like this one had a stand, but like I lost one. It's so funny. I said this literally exact same thing on the last podcast, but I'm like it lost one of the legs and I just can't find it. Aww. So that one has a stand. I just forgot it. Okay. But also it's probably just <clears throat> better if we just hold it up because there's a lot of echo in this room, but cool. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, dance later, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was something that, like, I saw it, it popped up in my store. I thought it was just something you were trying. And then I watched you and I was like, oh, no, you're not just trying this. You do this. <laughs> but it's not like this is just a for fun thing. Like, the, I guess all everyone always asks the question of, like, what do you do, like, other than work? Because yeah. usually I'm just working and not, like, not doing anything else. But I can actually say, like, yeah, I dance recreationally. Like, I've yeah. never professionally danced or anything. But um, in university i was doing like burlesque style dancing so Ooh. it was super like sexy fun yeah. stuff <laughs> like super fe feminine and it's like obviously it's through the university so it's more about empowerment and like yeah. you know just feeling strong in your heels and all that stuff got you got you um yeah and then when i moved back to toronto i found the underground and yeah i just signed up for classes like I, I never actually went there like i met a lot of dancers that were from there i think we've talked about this but yeah like, yeah i met a lot of dancers that are from there but I've never actually like seen it. I've seen the videos, like the videos that they do are cool. That was one of the, the yeah. Because when uh, the reason that I knew what, what it was was because I was uh, I was getting requests to do dance videos, and then I was just like, okay, what the fuck is a dance video? And yeah. then I had to like start researching, <laughs> and then like like uh, Millennium was one of them, Underground was one of them, and then like they just There's have, like Dance X Life too. That's yeah, like yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, more. that too. Like the, those are the ones that are like in Toronto. Like obviously besides all the LA ones, because the LA ones are insane. Like I know I when I. I went i went in that was like, crazy October. Actually, yeah when you were in la Jeez, and i saw you oh my god so what's the name of that place it's, it's called playground and uh, like playground la or la playground yeah and it was just an experience it was like i can't even describe it it was more than dance you know like mm -hmm. that week that i went was nicole kirkland's birthday session yeah. so it was her choreo and is it good yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so her choreo was like more of a story instead of just like to rhythm of this the music. Mm. So it was it was insane. And as she went full out on the very last dance and she like just broke down crying at the end of the class. It was like it was super powerful that mm. class. So because it's just yeah. like it's really it's a really expressive type thing, right? Because you're yeah. doing it like the only the only thing that I, I whenever I talk to any kind of dancers when I was trying to like level with them and, and try to have like conversations that we can like level with each other. The only thing that I can compare it to is like when I used to, cause I, I used to perform music in high school and like at a little bit in university, like in, at, uh, at open houses and, and coffee houses and stuff like that. So like with guitar, right? Did yeah. you sing too? Yeah. I yeah, did. Nice. And, and yeah, it's, it's like a big part of it is the fact that it's like when you, you can practice as much as you want, but then once you get like when, when the stage lights come on or when you're in a situation where like it's the moment, like the thing that you've been practicing for, the thing you've been training for. And then like the lights come on or whatever, it's just your body just shuts off. Yep. And you if just you don't have that, yeah. If you don't have that training, if you don't have that muscle memory down, yep. you'll just fall apart. Because yep. I'm like the entire, like the, the time that I would perform, I'd be up on stage and they turn the lights on me. It's like a, it's like an out of body experience when you just like, like I have no control over what I'm doing and it's, it's just straight muscle memory. Yeah. It's just autopilot. everything about it. But yeah. like, th there's also like a really big part of it too. That's very like cathartic because you're, you're going through it and like, you're, you don't feel like you're controlling it, but you're still like feeling it. It's wild. But yeah. So like when I saw you in that suit, I was like, Oh, I know that spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy yeah. to see you in there. Yeah. That's so it's, it's been really fun. It's tough to get down here in the winter. So like, I'm hoping to probably pick up cl more classes in the summer, mm -hmm. but I wish there was one closer to me because there's just so many good instructors. Like I found a few really good ones that I love. Yeah. So I just stick to their classes. But if I have a shoot or if I'm like booked that day, mm -hmm. it just like, it's just once a week usually that yeah. they teach that one, you know, hour or whatever. So it's important yeah. to have like you know things that are just only for you though right yeah it's so true mm. because that used to be lifting for me like i used to go to the gym 
zone out, just have my headphones in and just do what I need to do. Mm-hmm. Is your laptop going to be okay? Yeah, no, we're good. We're okay. good. We got like, <laughs> so we're, we're talking about it before we started that like I came over here and like I forgot the plug for my laptop. <laughs> so we're just going straight battery life. But like we got like four hours, 40 minutes. Oh, we are <laughs> we're, solid. We're, <laughs> we're solid. Okay, yeah, cool. Anyways. Yeah. What was I saying? Um, about like when you're like lifting. Oh, yeah. So yeah. like uh, that was my thing that I would just do for me. And if I was stressed out, I would just go to the gym and lift and that would be great. And I'd have my own music and, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. and I just I went to school for kin. So I knew what to do. Like I made my own little programs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I don't know why, but I just totally am not into it anymore. Like I try to go to the gym and I lift and I'm like, why am I picking up this dumbbell 12 times? Like there's no purpose. (laughs) So at least with dance, I'm like sweating a lot, but there's purpose. You're thinking a lot during it. Like there's so many things going on at the same time. So it's like enjoyable too, but Mm. it's also like challenging. So yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of people too, like eventually when you do something like lifting, that's so it's literally repetition over and over and dance is sort of the same but it's like you know with lifting it's it's a lot of repetition for things that like eventually a lot of people i feel especially if you're not doing it as like in a competitive way or if you're not doing it in a way that's like you know if your career is not kind of related to fitness then eventually everybody kind of like just gets sort of disillusioned with it like it happened to me it definitely happened to me yeah but like whatever whatever happens it happens to me all the time first of all but like when it does happen to me it just like you kind of just shift gears and find something different to do within fitness but it's always kind of fitness but i guess it's kind of the same with you right like you don't necessarily dance for fitness some no, people do it's Some just people, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that like i get my you know yeah. heart rate up but yeah like it's a good thing but at the same time if i am just doing dance like i really feel it after i'm like yeah. oh wow i'm so out of shape <laughs> so like if i'm just doing dance once a week like it's not gonna really do anything you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so yeah well, i mean it's a frequency thing too but still, yeah i mean I don't know. I, it, well, the point is, I think it's just, it's good to have some sort of outlet because like you, first of all, you're very, I know you're a very busy girl. <laughs> so I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk to me about, uh, we'll get to, we'll get to everything. But like, I know that I for sure wanted to talk to you when I, when I had the idea of doing the show, you're one of the first people I asked, like this is episode number two. <laughs> um, and <Numero dos. laughs> I wanted to talk to you because first of all, you I feel like we have a, I see a lot of parallels between us and like in our friend group too, but like particularly with the two of us, but like you just found it a lot quicker than I did. And you seem to be on this just insane trajectory, just blowing <laughs> up. Cause I'm like, first of all, you like, you're like, I like, how old are you? I'm 22. That's fucking crazy to me. Like, yeah, I'm a 97. <laughs> I literally just graduated last year. And, like, I didn't take any gap years in, like, high school or whatever. So I yeah. just went straight, like, high school to kind degree. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then you were you were filming for, because you went to, where you went to Laurier, yeah? Yes. So you were, and you were filming for the, the basketball team? Yeah. So what happened was I was an athletic trainer for the men's basketball team, mm-hmm. which was super random. Like athletic therapy is very different than what my original plan was. It was supposed to be just strength and conditioning. So just gym stuff. But if you're an athletic therapist, like it sounds like you'd be in the gym, but you're more on the medical, like, um, I guess rehab side of things. So like first aid taping, that kind of stuff. And oh, like gotcha, massaging, gotcha, gotcha, like all okay. that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to kind of try it out and see if that Avenue was something I was interested in. And my roommate did it for the swim team the, the like year before. And I was like, Oh, perfect. Like swim doesn't need any taping. It's super <laughs> low maintenance. Right. So I went to the head athletic trainer and he was like, Oh, actually basketball needs one. You'll be there like twice a week. No problem. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can probably fit that in my schedule. So I, you know, meet the coach and everything. And like at the end of it, I was pretty much there every single day of the week during their practices. And then like Friday, Saturday's games. So like I, it was super intensive that I was on the team. I was basically (laughs) on the team and it was great because I actually like, that was never a thing that I got to experience, like being on a legitimate like team like Mm. that. And the, the, 
the vibe is just different. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah, yeah. It's like a family and mm-hmm. they're all like guys. So it was just like all my little brothers. Like it was just <laughs> so nice. So anyway, um, before that I had filmed my cousin's wedding just super randomly. Like I would pick up my little camera or like I have a GoPro and do vacation videos like super randomly. Yeah. So my cousin was like, Hey, do you want to do my wedding? And I'm like, no, because that's <laughs> way too much pressure. <laughs> so, I would say the same thing too. <laughs> be yeah. So even my mom, she's like, ah, I don't know if she should do that. So, but I don't know. I, I was just like, you know what? Maybe I'll just try and this will be like my gift to her kind of. Mm. So I did that. And then that kind of led me to doing little things here and there, just filming. And then when I went onto the men's basketball team, um, the coach during, I think it was like a Christmas party, the coach like took me aside and he's like, Nicole, I am so mad at you. Why didn't you tell me you filmed? And I'm like, Oh shit. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like I I just (laughs) thought I wanted to keep them separate. Like fitness was one, you know, like Avenue and then film was just like a super side hobby, low key, nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, like you have to start filming for us. So I basically got hired to do both. So like during the week and stuff, I would just do like taping and whatever, if they needed ice, that kind of stuff. And then during the game, like pregame, we do warm up taping. And then during the game I'd film and then like edit it after. And Lori didn't have a media program like Humber does or Ryerson. So when I posted the video, it kind of like blew up a little bit and everyone oh, was like, oh, shit, got like, you, got you. Lori has a media, like, you know <laughs> what I mean? So, but, you know, Lori was like, oh, wow, we have a men's basketball team. Like, <laughs> so I brought attention to them. And then I guess like that response of the school really made me realize that like, oh, wow, maybe I could actually do this. Yeah. So. Yeah, super fun, super random that it like happened that way. Mm-hmm. But yeah. so, so when did at what point? So how did you how do you end up meeting Kofi? Because I from the way that I know you, if I'm remembering this correctly, is I well we have a we have a group chat that we all. Um, uh, it's, it's just a bunch of us shooters that are in there. Uh, and mostly Toronto fitness and GTA stuff. Based, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Kofi added me uh, to that, to that chat. Yeah. Kofi and then at added some point, at some point he adds you. Yeah. And then we, <laughs> that's, that's how we start talking, but I'm just, uh, so who was the OG? It was probably you and Relly maybe, or who was the no, I other met, person? I met Matt on that chat too. Oh, really? Or, or did I? No, I think so. Well, I mean, the, I think the first time that I, the first time that I actually met him was, uh, when Kofi and me and Kofi and Matt all did a shoot together just for fun. Like yeah. just to, just to try out smoke bombs, like under a bridge near mm-hmm. my house. <clears throat> But yeah, like when, when that group chat started, I think it was just, uh, there was only a few of us and I'm pretty sure Kofi added like everybody. Um, yeah, I, I remember I adding, I remember I adding, I remember <laughs> I added Steph and, uh, everybody else, it was either you or Kofi. Yeah. I think I've only added maybe like one or two, but that was way after like mm. Nero I oh, added yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I don't know who else. But yeah. It was much later on. Yeah. Like way later on. Just I was for a like, long time, it was just us. Yeah. <laughs> like the yeah small group of us. I know. So how do you meet, so how do you meet Kofi? Cause that ends up leading to, I literally have no idea. <laughs> like I am honest, like I don't, I, we've never had met before we met. Like Remember I, with, yeah. um, Oh my God, what's her name? Uh, she's a competitor. We did the smoke bomb stuff with her. Oh, like the yeah, superhero. Yeah. Alicia, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, like that oh, was the first that. time yeah, I yeah, met yeah. him and you at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I, it must have been through like fitness mutual friends because obviously I was in like the fitness sure. community, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Gotcha, but like gotcha. for other reasons. So like, I don't really know, to be <laughs> honest, like it must have been just an Instagram algorithm thing, explore page. Like I probably just saw his photos and was like, oh, that's dope. Follow. And then. Kofi's going to be so fired up if he listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> be like, I did Shut that. Up, Kofi. Yeah, I know. Like, bitch, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Kofi. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he triggered all of this. So then ever since then, it's like for you, because I've, I've been, because ever since uh, whenever that was, you were, were you still in school at that time? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. So that was like, how long ago was that? I was just like, probably like a year. So then everything between me meeting you and where you are now was a fucking year. It's crazy. It's all because of you. (laughs) The moment all the the group chat came into my life. (laughs) It's actually true though. (laughs) 
Because, like, let's go through it. I mean, like, what you, so, so you graduate Laurier and then you're, and then all of a sudden you're out on your own. And then, but you, I mean, you have a knack for that, right? You have a, you have a good ability to like make an impression on people when you meet them. So they don't forget you. That's a really important part of networking. I think it's literally because I'm an only child <clears throat> and I've been, what does that mean? <laughs> like I don't have any siblings. So I was, whenever my mom would like throw me into a dance class or a gymnastics, oh, like I'd have to be like, Hey, I'm Nicole. <laughs> like, yeah. Want to be my friend? <laughs> you know, like I, I guess I kind of grew up trying to. Just, oh, that's interesting. Like make friends. I never thought about that. Yeah. And even my cousins are like fairly older than me and they don't live in Toronto. So I didn't have like, like I literally just had friends to rely on and my parents. So mm. yeah, so that's you, really a big part of it. So you've been to Toronto like all your life? Yeah. Like literally never moved. Born and raised? Yeah. You're from like the East End, right? Um, like North York-ish. Okay. Got you. So yeah, it's called Willowdale. <laughs> But, not familiar yeah, it's <laughs> literally just, anything east of uh east it's like of a young section of yeah i don't even know you go east of young street for me you may as well be in another fucking country it's all <laughs> it's so fucking foreign to me the, the few times that i have to go down there i'm on bayview so it's not that east I'm of young. i know bayview okay that's bayview pretty, and steals yeah, yeah, yeah that's where i am <laughs> <laughs> so <coughs> sorry <coughs> i'm just gonna die over here <laughs> so um uh, so do you really, so really you don't pick up a camera until you're like in, so I guess from the time that you really pick up a camera, you're immediately, you know, on your way. Yeah. I think the main thing that helped was doing it while I was still in school yeah. because like I, it, most people, you know, they do school and they, they graduate and they're like, Oh wow. Yeah. Now what? That's what happened to me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Everyone really yeah. like even with me, but I had that like backup thing that yeah, I was yeah. doing. So yeah, super weird. Like it, it's just that lull period that I missed because I was, it was, it was like two things happening at once. And while one was going downhill, the other one was coming up. So I never right. had to like, you know, go through that bumper stage of like, Oh no, what am I doing? Why am I, you know, why did I get a degree? Like, so you just kind of rode so, the wave. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like right after I graduated, I went to Israel through birthright. It's like this free oh, yeah, yeah. Israel trip. Um, sure. and I actually came back from that trip and had ruptured both of my eardrums. So oh, I remember this. Yeah. yeah I couldn't I don't know the whole hear story, but. for like two weeks, like literally could not, I was, death like i just I, even just saying that out loud is just so weird to even say like just imagine yourself underwater you know like that feeling of just uh, yeah, you yeah. don't like it's super muffled and everything um so like even if my mom was beside me i she'd have to like text me whatever she was saying because i, I literally couldn't hear her i was so frustrated but anyway that's probably why i'm so focused on like <laughs> sound design and like music now because i <laughs> oh love God. like <laughs> it's like wow i really like it's important like audio and music yeah. is <laughs> essential <laughs> yeah no no offense to anyone who could you know anyways <laughs> but that's like the art of it right like yeah. to having all of the senses like active when you're watching a video like that's yeah. important to me where you know but because you would think i mean i guess if you don't do it you wouldn't necessarily think about it but like it is a complete you know there's there's multi it's a multi-sense experience yeah exactly there's a there's a few things like you know i thought about this a lot too like if 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 the visuals are off it can take you out of it if the audio is off it can take you out of it if the timing is off it can take you out of it it only takes one thing yeah really like you can do everything perfectly like let's say let's say you film like the most incredible cinematic you get all the top gear all your visuals are incredible think of like the think of like your favorite movie and then record all the audio from that movie on your iPhone. That movie is completely different. Yep. <laughs> Instantly, it's completely different. Or if you take away some some sound, some soundscaping, some some um, some foley, it you know you can feel when something is. You might not be able to put your finger on it, but you can definitely feel when something is missing. Yeah. You're just like, I don't know what it is, but it just didn't do it for me. If you ever had that reaction to like a movie or like a music video or something, it's because something was missing. Mm -hmm. You can't put you maybe you can't put your finger on it. One, what it is. Maybe the filmmaker can't do it either, but there, there's probably somebody out there that can tell you, oh, it's because if you added, you know, if you added the footsteps, then it wouldn't have made the walking look so ghostly. Yeah. There's like little, little things like that true. that you don't think about. Yeah. So like it, <clears throat> when you're, when you're starting out, 
you have no intention. Did you like ever like have any intention of like it becoming a job at all? Or? Um, my aunt kind of prompted it. Like when I finished that one wedding video, like yeah. I fully remember sitting in her dining room in Wasaga Beach, and she like I should. It's her daughter, so she's super biased, obviously. But I show her the wedding <laughs> video, right? And like sh- after watching it, she's like. Nicole, you, you got to do this full time, like, or at least like part time, like you got to take this seriously. Cause you're really good. And I'm like, I'm like, maybe like I do have a kid degree that I'm about to finish. Like I literally had a full other plan. Yeah. And then I think literally it was her saying that. And then I don't know, in the process of me figuring out what I was going to do, like the next year I was like my indeed search notifications were like strength training and like boot camp classes yeah. instructors and then like wedding videographer <laughs> <laughs> like the, those were the two emails i was getting so that kind of triggered me to um accept an internship at beautiful life studios which was like a wedding internship that i did this summer so that like really educated me on mm. like the whole sound stuff and like I, I don't know. I kind of, I did the internship knowing that it was going to be great to like get educated on what I needed to get educated with if I was going to do weddings. But like, I didn't really go into it thinking like, oh, this is going to help me in every other field of right, video. Right, right. But it did just because audio is, it's, you know, it's intertwined in everything, not just weddings. So yeah, yeah I guess that's kind of how it started. So yeah, it was just super weird. I don't know. <laughs> like a lot of people, even now, they're like, "Do you have a plan? Like, what's like? Do you want to become a director, a DP? Like, do like music videos? Do you want to shoot for the NBA?" I'm like, hey, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Yo, I don't know. I would love to do all of those things because I just I haven't like dipped my feet in all of those waters. Yeah, you know? I like, think that's the, I think that's the sentiment that like <clears throat> I mean I know that's how I feel and like I feel like that's probably a lot of the same, you know, situation that a lot of people like us who, you know, we didn't go to school for it. We didn't plan necessarily, you know, we haven't thought about it for, we didn't think about it for a long period of time before doing it necessarily. Uh, we just kind of picked it up and did it. And it's the, I I think that's the whole, I had no idea where the fuck I was going with that. (laughs) (laughs) Just completely lost that thought. Well, go like what sticking to a plan. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's (laughs) for, for people like us, uh, it's just, you kind of, you just kind of just take what you get. Yeah. Like it's what, if, if there's an opportunity to do something, sure. doesn't matter what it is. You know, you're, I, we're not the kind of people who, I don't think we're the kind of people who, you know, somebody offers us something. Oh no, I don't do that. You know, it's yeah. just like, well, I've I'll never try. done it before, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. the, I think that's the attitude that gets you to, to, you know, to, to put yourself in a position where you might, you know, even if that one thing goes nowhere, at least you had fun doing it. Mm-hmm. And who knows? Like, there's so many times when I, you know, I, I probably can't pick out an exact example, but like, there's so many times when I like, I'll take something on, forget that I agreed to it show up and do it and just the whole time thinking about like why am i here why am i doing this this feels so pointless and then you know two three months later i'll be like this was so fucking stupid and then somebody happened to be around you know and they yep. just like the, and the, the video will go up or whatever will go up and then you'll get a message like oh i saw this thing that you did yeah and then you're like, oh, <laughs> yep. So you just never know. I feel like you just have to keep that yes attitude. Yeah, it's all. It's literally always the free gigs that get you more opportunities when you start. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But okay, so here that there, there's an interesting segue. Mm-hmm. So we're so you, you obviously you start. You know, you, you you don't feel comfortable taking money the first few times that you do it. Oh, like, definitely I, not. Yeah, no. yeah. So like, at what point do you make that shift from like, okay, I, you know. I'll do it, but like you, have, it's when do you have to start thinking about money? Ooh, okay. So I'm gonna say I've never actually like sat back and reflected about this, but I think what happened was I'll go into like I guess my story of like starting to work with Adidas and stuff. Yes, please. So that like. <laughs> So Adidas. wow, this is. Can I can I just throw it out there? A year she's been doing this. <laughs> Fucking Adidas. Continue. <laughs> oh yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. So nineteenth birthday, 
we're at Cube and we get like bottle service. So we have a booth and it's split between me and one of my best friend's boyfriend, Zach. So one of my other friends who's with me there, um, it, like Roy Woods was performing that night and he, mm. Roy Woods had a booth. So my friend who's like insanely gorgeous or whatever, like mm-hmm. she somehow sneaks her way into his booth and I follow. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking to these guys and they're probably all artists or in the industry of some sort. So I end up talking to this one guy, um, and he invites us back to this after party, but we're so tired. We're like, no, we're okay. <laughs> yeah. But like, we'll get each other instagram so the next day i look at like who's following me and it's k forest i don't know if you know him but he's an artist and he has this like one very like famous song called reverse and like i listened to it (laughs) and so i like when i saw that that was the person i was like oh my god like what the heck so I messaged him and I'm like, oh my God, I'm such a fan of your work. I didn't realize that you were like (laughs) who I listened to. Like it didn't, you know what I mean? It's one of those artists that like just put cover art and it's not like their face. They don't, they didn't put their face out that much. So anyway, with that, I messaged him later and I was like, if you have any, like, I don't know, opportunities where you would need video, let me know. Cause I want to get, start getting into it. She's like, okay, bet I have an album listening party on whatever date. So this was, I guess this was probably, Oh, I'm going to say 2018 summer. So this was me going into fourth year. Yeah. That's when it was. Okay. Right. right. No, you, no, this was, what year is it? 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it must've been 2018. By the way, that's not a, that's not a dumb question. I forget all the time. Yeah, I know. It's so it's weird. weird to say 2020. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know. Whatever. Time frame wise, it was in the summer and I recorded like just a recap of his album listening party. And when I was there, like, again, only child, right? That vibe where I'm like, hey, whatever. I'm just going to go to this hey jam, outside jam, like fully alone with yeah, my yeah. camera. Like, hey, like. What you know, just I literally just throw myself there and um I asked this one guy, I think his name is um maybe it's Anthony. It's probably not Anthony, it starts with an A, but I met him this one shooter there who's a ph- photographer, and like my rookie question was like, Oh hey, like what are you shooting on? You know, like oh. just to like <laughs> yeah, make yeah, yeah. make conversation <laughs> with this photographer. Yeah. And and I was like, Oh, do you know K Forest? And he's like, No, actually. I, um, I work for this company called peak and he's like, do you want me to introduce you to the owner? He's here. And I'm like, Oh wow. Like, sure. So I met Imad, who's the owner of peak. And he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll keep in touch with you if you ever want to come out and shoot. And Imad has like, what is the owner of peak, which is like a creative agency, I guess. And they mm-hmm. have basically all of Adidas's creative like oh, content. Gotcha, so gotcha. Um, similar to like victory and Nike. Those are like, this is what happens. <laughs> I don't know if the podcast can hear that clinking. It's okay. I'll, I'll, tr- I'll do it. I'll try to edit it out. It's fine. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I like after that summer, um, I worked like at a, a soccer event, Tango league. And then there was another like charity run called run for the oceans. And they were all basically sponsored or hosted by Adidas. So that year I was just not being paid for it. And is that like really that's really loud I don't uh, know. it should be fine okay. we'll work that, that's it'll the, go away soon <laughs> that's like what is that it's like the heaters or yeah it's because the pipes are old i think i don't oh. know it might be someone actually fixed i don't know <laughs> <laughs> not sure we haven't figured it out yet anyway, bear with us people continue <laughs> um so yeah uh i think segueing into like when i was getting paid it was when the other companies would pay me i think that's when i started charging like before when peak wasn't paying me i wasn't charging but then when peak started paying me which was probably like the summer after probably like a full but that that was like during school and stuff so when i came back into it and i started getting paid i was like oh okay that's what they're gonna pay me this should probably be my rate so yeah that's kind of how i like 
Well, I guess that makes it easier for you, right? Just because like you start out with somebody else dictating to you what the standard is. Yeah. And then you can base, you can use that as your baseline. It makes it a little bit easier for but sure. it's a weird baseline because it's Adidas. So like obviously <laughs> their budgets are probably a lot higher than most of them, but still like it wasn't, it's not too bad because most of the time I was just shooting, I wasn't editing. So mm-hmm. like it just, yeah. Still, I yeah. mean, you still got the cloud of being able to say that my first paying client was fucking Adidas. <laughs> Literally, well, technically, it's peak. Like, I didn't, I didn't have a contract with. Yeah, Adidas, but it was in association with Adidas. You yeah, can, it's you can, true. You can make that claim. I'm not gonna hold it against you. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but yeah, just like moral of the story, put yourself out there. Like, you know, like yeah, if you want to do sure. something, don't be afraid to ask mm-hmm. because. If you don't ask, like, don't you're ask, never, don't get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's so true. That's like something that's, it's so difficult for me. Cause like the people that anybody who like knows me, you would know that like, <clears throat> like asking is it's, and like, be, like going first is yeah. that that's the tough thing for me. Right. Mm-hmm. But like, it's something that you really got to do because you don't ask you don't get I right? know you and don't it's get what like, you don't ask for it's, you get, it's a sense of like vulnerability that you feel but if you, you do yeah, it in the sure. right way then it's it's yeah. usually not bad the only child angle I've literally never thought about because <laughs> like you always have to be out there like by because like I could hide I could hide behind my big brother anytime we went anywhere I always yeah. did yeah maybe that's like I think that's probably what contributed to me being the more kind of like quiet timid one because I could just hide behind my brother because my brother has this big personality he's really funny <laughs> yeah and he's you know he's a social butterfly everywhere we go like every family event i'm just always leaning on my brother because if it's not for him i'm just so fucking awkward yeah because i don't know what to talk to anybody but i have a massive family there's so many i have such a hard time keeping track of everybody (laughs) but like it's it's i I will say though that like doing this like doing the whole video thing has changed me a lot because like you have to do you have to take that initiative you have to go first you have to you have to put yourself out there and you have to be you have to you have to not be afraid of looking stupid because like yeah, the that's whole th- that fear of looking stupid or looking bad it's going to stop you from doing a lot of things that like are first of all not a big deal and second of all could really make big strides for you yeah and and the main thing that like that i guess brings to like that I, I want to mention is people not posting their work because people are afraid that it's not good enough. Is, right? that, is that something that you've encountered? Yeah, a lot. So really? many. Oh my goodness. Like a, a significant amount where, I, where they come to me and I'm like, they're like, I don't know why I'm not getting work. Like, I don't really know how to get clients. Like, I'm like, do you have an Instagram page? They're like, well, like it's a personal one. I'm like, okay, that's your number one mistake. <laughs> like, <laughs> like how are they going to find you if you don't put yourself out there? Like, yeah. and it's that feeling of maybe, maybe they're thinking like, oh, I don't like, I'm not super proud of this. So I'm not going to post it. Like, honestly, I, there was two months where I posted one post every day. None of those posts were like, a one, maybe like two or three, yeah, but like yeah. the rest of those videos were just content. It was just having my name on the timeline and whoever, you know, ended up seeing it, saw yeah. it was brought to my page and maybe they'll see the A1 post. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's definitely like, do not feel like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. don't hold back from posting your work. That's like a huge thing that I can recommend. Yeah. Because I mean, I feel like <clears throat> I, for me, I don't know if you feel like this, but like there's past a certain time, like in my Instagram, there's a, there's a line that I do not cross. Cause I'm like, I cannot look at that cause it's so bad. Oh, you don't delete your old work. No, I yeah. leave it all. I leave it all out there. Like, uh, like I will say, you can scroll all the way to the first post I ever put on Instagram. Like yeah. all my old YouTube blogs, they're horrible. I don't know why you would watch them, <laughs> but if you want, if they're all, they're always going to be up there. Like I'm never going to take those down. Yeah. I don't believe in that, but yeah, I mean like there's some hot, hot garbage yeah. <laughs> that I am, that I have my name on yeah. and like, it's, it's okay. Right. Like, like you, even like, still, it's like not that bad. <laughs> yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's like it, you're there's, there's, it's, there's, it can always be better. Yeah. You can always be better. There's always something that you could have done differently or, you know, there's always like the trends are going to change. Style is going to change. Yeah. And like maybe five years from now, your fucking video ages like milk, but if you don't make that video, you don't put it up there, you don't get that feedback. Or if you don't have that sort of lexicon to look back at, 
how do you measure your progress? Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, how, it's fun to scroll back down and be like, yeah. oh, wow. And then until scroll you back up and you're like, and like nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I hit that line, I'm scrolling right the fuck back up. I'm yeah. like, I don't want anything to do with those older. Guys, don't come for me if you see any of those, okay? Like, I was learning. <laughs> They're, yeah, I know please they're don't bad. attack him. He's just, <laughs> he's just trying to be honest here. Yeah, like I'm leveling here. Like, okay, I didn't make money for most of those. So just don't come for me. They're bad, I know. <laughs> but yeah, it's like if you don't... I didn't. I've not, I don't think I've ever had that. Like, I don't know if I've ever met anybody who's just not putting their shit really? out there. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, it's funny. I don't know if this person is going to listen to this, but um, I bought a lens off of Kijiji and yeah. like I immediately my <laughs> only child instinct comes out. Hey, like, are you a creative too? I wonder, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, I just get curious. You're selling a and lens. You, yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, and I'm wondering, like, oh, do, are they stopping or are they starting or, yeah, yeah. you know, like, why are they selling it? Um, angry but, ex-boyfriend, angry ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? Yeah. Um, but they did car photography and he, oh. we kind of got into a conversation and he was just like, I don't know. I, I don't feel like clients would be interested in what I post. I'm like, you won't know Interesting. until yeah. you post. So, yeah. It's, yeah. Like it's my, weird. my number one source of clients are, is literally Instagram. I oh, get yeah. it through email, but mm -hmm. I always ask them like, Hey, just out of curiosity, where did you find me? Instagram. Like I think every the same, time. Yeah. Do the Every same time for me. It's, it's good. Like mm -hmm. I love it. It's a free resource. Like knock on wood, that doesn't change. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so crazy. But yeah, like there's there's literally nothing to lose. I mean, like maybe maybe you embarrass yourself once or twice, but like <laughs> that's not the yeah. end of the world. I it know. sucks. It feels like it's the worst thing ever when it's happening to you. But then like you look back at it later, and it's like that wasn't so bad. Yeah, exactly. But if you're if you're constantly afraid of looking bad, then you're never gonna look like anything because always gonna know who the fuck you are. Yeah. So like the, the whole that, yeah, that's, that's, that's wild to me. But like, <clears throat> I think that the, the whole, the whole idea of like putting yourself out there, it's uh there's, there's a very important thing that you, I feel like you can only really learn it by doing it. Like we can, we can sit here, you know, all the live long day and talk about like all the things that you should do. But at the end of the day, ultimately it's, it all falls on you, yep. which is like, the, which it's a good thing. And it's a bad thing about doing what we do is that, the good thing is that it's all on you. The bad thing is it's all on you. Like if there's you, a huge accountability yeah. and like discipline that I've had to learn and I still don't have a crazy amount of discipline, but like it's, if you don't, it really bites you in the butt. Like yeah. seriously. <laughs> so yeah, it is really fun to, you know, not set an alarm sometimes and yeah. like get enough sleep that you need or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But then there's nights where like I, it like, I've, I've explained this once before to someone who uh, like I was trying to explain that like I am my own boss. So I'm imagining myself as like telling me the employer of what to do. And oh. like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I'm working till three in the morning and yeah. it's like, what kind of boss would, would do ask that you to, to do an that. employee? <laughs> like nobody, like that's literally, you don't, you don't do that. Yeah. So like I have kind of tried to, to change it a bit and see like, Okay, how can I be a good boss to myself, but also be like that's interesting disciplined enough, you know, mm -hmm. to not be like you're super still gonna, to still be able to hold yourself accountable. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. it's tough, but I think like one thing that I find that helps a lot is just like editing with someone else or like doing jobs with oh, people that I there. know to like be accountable. Because if mm -hmm. I'm just at home doing work, like I'll just eat my whole fridge. Like I just, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I just get so distracted and I'm just bored and I'm like, there's so many distractions at home. So like if I'm with someone or if I'm in an environment where there's a lot of other people working, I'm like, okay, I should probably be working too. And that kind of like <laughs> narrows my focus, I guess. Yeah. Were you like so. that in school too with like your, your schoolwork and shit? Uh, probably. Cause I definitely was. I think so. Like I remember when, like if I were to do an essay or something, usually I would leave it to like really last minute and I would yep. just do it like in bed, like on my computer, you know, rushing through it. But yeah, most of the time I'd try to like be on campus, be with other people. Yeah. yeah just be in the environment. That yeah. Because for me, if I, if I went home, it was over. Yeah. I wasn't doing shit. <laughs> yeah. And it, that carries to today, right? Like it, I, I've had, I've, I've had to really force myself to change that, but it's like, 
home is home, right? Like you, yeah. you just, especially like I worked very hard to make my home comfortable, but then I realized I did too good of a job because now <laughs> when I'm at home, I don't want to do shit. I want to sit on the couch. I want to pet my cat. Yeah. I want to like <clears throat> eat whatever I want and just sit around. But like, yeah. and that, <clears throat> but like, it's just not, I almost had to like make it so that wasn't even an option for me anymore where I had so much on my plate that like, okay, you can't sit down. If you sit down, you're going to fall behind. And if you fall behind, there's nobody you can blame. Yeah, exactly. It's all on you. And, and if, it's you, scary sometimes, if you make yeah. yourself, if you like, okay, looking bad is one thing as, as an ego, like there's, there's a difference, right? You can look bad on an ego level. You can look bad professionally. Yeah. I don't care about looking bad with and get and taking a blow to the ego, but looking bad professionally is something that can bury you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, now it's like when I'm, when I'm at home, you know, I, I can, I can do a, I can, I can work now, but it's just like, I need, you know, like I, I kind of like corner off my, like my office, AKA <laughs> the corner of my living room where there's no windows and no distractions, just yeah. turn on two lights. And like, I just kind of have to sit there, but like, I always feel too that like I work better when there's pressure. Yeah, me too. A hundred percent. If yeah. there's a like hard deadline and you know you're yeah. either losing money or you're gonna disappoint someone super important or yeah. or it's gonna like you said, professionally it's like not gonna <laughs> fly, then yeah. yeah, I definitely work way better under pressure. But then you end sure. up in this weird like uh like this is what happened to me was that like if I have one shoot that I have uh that I have to do edits for in a span of a week that never happens to me by the way but if for some <laughs> reason there was only one week where i only had one edit to do i probably am not going to touch it that week right like i'm gonna be like oh i'm gonna take i'll take the night off or like yeah. oh it's it's late i'm tired i'm gonna go to bed but if if it's if it's a week where i'm like i have four hours of free time and i have three videos to make in that four hours then uh, in those four hours, I am making great use of those four hours. Yeah. Because you don't have a choice. Yeah. But then like, I feel like that puts you in this weird like loop of like, if you don't, if you don't work enough, you feel like you're being lazy. If you, and then you take on too much and then you burn yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> and this is like, I, like I bring this up with absolutely no resolution because I have not been able to figure it out. <laughs> You and need like, to go through burnout to like really know yeah. like what the I bring hell? it up because I know it recently like happened to you. Yeah. Like what the heck was that? Yeah. <laughs> it happened to me like right before too. Like I've still yeah. kind of, I don't even think I'm fully over it yet, but yeah, it's when it hits you, man, it's, it's fucking wild. Yeah. So like, like what was it for you that like, Oh, I don't even know. Like I just, it was probably like a lack of sleep for sure. Right. Um, but it was just like overbooking because, you know, in my head, I like this is a total rookie mistake. If you book a shoot, you know, you're you're booked Tuesday from this time to this time. OK, your next shoot is Wednesday. Your next shoot is then Friday. And then you have another one Sunday. And it's like, hey, but when are you going to edit, edit those? Yeah. Because <laughs> like like so now what I've done with my calendars, if I book a shoe. I also book like the allotted editing times and mm. then the due date. And like, so I, it's all color coded. And I know like yeah. if I'm editing on those two days and a shoot opportunity comes up, unless it's Drake or whatever, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I'm booked. Like I literally can't yeah. because I don't have the time. So mm -hmm. it's like, and saying no is obviously like the, sh the worst feeling mm -hmm. like at first, mm -hmm. but then when you say no, like thinking as if, you know, like you are a professional business, like you don't call a nail salon or a hair salon and they're like, Oh, actually, you know what? I don't feel like it you today. Know we can, no, but like we can squeeze you in yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. an hour and a half long hair appointment. Like that doesn't happen. They're right, booked right, right. Yeah, or yeah. you pick a different date. Like it's just, so it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know exactly what it was, but it was, it was definitely just overbooking myself and like not having enough time to catch up like yeah. the edits and stuff. So, so like I'll say, I'll talk about what happened with me was that like, yeah. I, I mean, I, I talked about this. If anybody knows that I have a YouTube channel, I made a video about it <laughs> at the end of the year. Um, but <clears throat> when it happened to me, like 
it's there's not one like specific moment where you feel like okay this is it and you snap Mm -hmm. you don't just hit a wall and you also don't see it coming necessarily or i didn't yeah and it just there was just a point where where like it was like my second or third straight week where i just could not handle myself anymore and like i just i couldn't think and like i was forgetting things like i was having these weird things where i was like forgetting was was crazy for me little gaps in my memories like there there would be whole conversations that just i lost from my mind yep not like long conversations like little things so just like when i come home and and like um and I would ask, like, I would ask my girlfriend, like, oh, did, did you, did you do this? And she would say yes. And then like 15 minutes later, I'd come back and I'd ask her again. Yeah. Completely forgot that I asked her. Yep. And then it just, it like little things like that just kept happening. Yeah. Okay. So what, when I, did the whole forgetting thing, I went through that as yeah. well. I, okay. So I can't, I still can't believe I did this. I was going to, let's say, I don't know exactly what days it was, but I was going to LA on a Friday. And so, um, I live in an apartment building and we have like a guest visitors parking in the lobby section. So on Thursday, I'm running all these errands and stuff before I go on this trip. And I think what I was doing was running the errands and then I had to go downtown. So in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go park the car, ask my mom to like drive me to the subway station and then go downtown Right. and then go upstairs, realize, okay, yeah, I definitely, I don't need to go downtown cause I can just do something like either at home or whatever. And, um, like I, or maybe my parents weren't home or something like that. So I just ended up doing like everything I was packing and I left for LA. I guess it, it was probably like early morning the next day. I come back from my trip, which was literally only like four days mm-hmm. and realized I had parked the car in the guest parking lot. Oh, no. That was the 15 minute maximum. And I had oh, left no. the car. Oh, like no. I fully didn't even connect the, the fact that I left to the car there. <laughs> That's a bad one. It was super bad. I like, and so my parents knew before I left, but they didn't tell me because they didn't want to like ruin my trip, which oh. was very nice of them. Shout out to my parents. <laughs> Shout, out. <laughs> Shout out mom and dad. Shout out mom and dad. But like, yeah, I came back from the trip and they're like, so, uh, you, you remember something? where you, yeah, literally oh, no. you forget something. And I was like, oh, no. as soon as they said that, I was like, Oh, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so like, I don't know. I think it, it hit them like the same day because I don't know, they, they must've seen the car parked and they were like, she's not even home. Like, where is she without the car kind of thing? So right. I don't know how that happened, but yeah. Forgetting that's definitely a is, sign of burnout. <laughs> yeah. But is that like one of the moments where you have to, cause like for me, it was like, you have to, you, there's like little, little red flags that you catch on yourself. And then like, at one point you have to kind of check yourself and like, what is happening to me? <laughs> and then when you think about it and then you kind of like, it was like what happened with me was like, I, I was, you know, all these things were happening and I couldn't figure out why. Mm-hmm. And then I'm trying to look in within me to be like, okay, well, what am I doing? Like, am I like, like, am I, is my, is my Were you diet overbooking wrong? yourself like oh, me or 100%. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That was yeah. like the, the root of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but then like, I'm, I'm looking at myself and I'm just like, but I've been doing this for like how long? Like mm-hmm. why, like why it, now? It, it, it can't, it can't be that like, you know, it can't be a busy thing. It's not that I'm too busy. Like I can handle the busy. But turns out I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's not like it, it, that was a hard thing for me to, to, to admit to myself because like, I don't like weakness. Mm-hmm. And for me, that felt like weakness, but it's not, it's not weakness. It's just your brain only has so much like RAM. Yep. <laughs> you know, there's only so many things that you can do all at once Yeah. before you just run out of space. And then if you just try to cram one more thing in there, the only thing to get it in there is by taking something else out. And if you max your RAM, Adobe crashes. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened to both Or if us. you don't and you're just doing something really simple and routine, it'll just <laughs> it crash also anyways. Crashes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, that's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it was weird. And like you have to go back and check yourself and you realize, okay, well... If I am burnt out, when did it start? And for me, it was like a month. Yeah. And I had been in the shit for like a month. But then by then, it was too late to kind of... Because everything... Because I was already booked up until the end of that year. Yeah. Well, and, me too. Yeah. And so it I was, was just like, like... There's nothing you can do. Yeah. You just have to go through it. Yep. You, and yep. then you have to... As much as you can, you have to kind of work some mitigation and some abatement 
as as soon as you possibly can, which for me was the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. which was that, uh, okay, I was like, when is my last booking? And it was like January mm -hmm. of, of uh, J January, 2020. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take that and I'm not going to take anything else. And I'm not going to actively, I'm not going to try to say no to things, but I'm also not going to, you know, I'm not going to check in with people and ask if they need anything. I'm not going to try to go and look for things and, and try to put myself into situations where I can get requests. I'm just going to hang back. If I get anything, I get it. But if I'm going to try to not take anything and then I'm just going to try to survive. Like this was like in the, this was right before the fall that I had this realization and then I had to live through it until January this year. And Luckily, well, I mean, not luckily, we but like, we're basically on the same timeline because when I went to LA, that whole forgetting thing, that was October and okay, I like yeah. fully like was in burnout, like crash, like air 404. That was like end of December, beginning oh. of January. So like relatively so we very same. Parallel. We are. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't know it. Well, we kind of do now, but it's like a sad thing to connect. <laughs> <laughs> like, so when was your life fucked up? <laughs> oh, around the same time as mine. Sick. <laughs> but that's usually how, like, I feel like that's usually how friendships happen. Like, oh, you hate the same person? Yeah, yeah I hate this person too. And then, <laughs> you know, just bonding over that kind of stuff. Is that but, how you make your friends? <laughs> it's just like, do you hate this bitch too? <laughs> that okay? used to be, I you guess that me. used to be the old way. <laughs> but yeah, no. Just the standoffish approach. <laughs> But yeah, yeah like we, when you're in it, you just, you got it. You, the only way to look is to look back and check yourself. And then, uh, but yeah, like you could, you just, there was no choice. Like you just got to go through it. Yeah. Like and then really it gets worse, go and worse, it, yeah. and worse and worse and worse. But then like, you, you just have to kind of trust that eventually you'll be out of it. If it's, I'm not saying that if you find yourself in a situation where you are 100% burnt out, that you should just <laughs> soldier through it. There are times too, when you should really understand when you are drowning Yeah, and it's unsafe. Yeah. And there's a difference between that and also just like, okay, what can I just march through it? Because like doing what we did, I really don't recommend it. Like yeah. I, <laughs> just marching through it and just telling everybody it's fine. And because also you, you have the problem of like, if you, if you start to talk to people that you, you know, that you have shoots booked with and you start and they start to catch wind that you might not be all there mentally, then like, for me, it was a thing of where I was worrying that like, are people going to are people going to think that I'm compromised and that I'm not, you know, mm. I'm not going to be at the top of my game. So, like, yeah. so then I have to, I had to kind of put it on that, like nothing was wrong just because I didn't oh, want to lose that faith. Yeah. Right. And that's true. So, I mean the, the whole, but like, I ultimately think that, that helped me get through it because like, I kind of just would have to pep, pep talk myself before every shoot and just say that like, okay, you're going to smile. You're going to be yourself. You're going to, you're going to make jokes. You're going to try to make people laugh and probably fail. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're going to, you're going to do everything that you do just like you normally do. You're going to say, thank you. You're going to go home and then you're going to crawl up in a ball and then just try to sleep. Uh, but then like, I would just have to do that week, week after week after week. Yeah. And it's just, I think, like a huge part of being self-aware and like yeah. really being like, hey, what's normal and what's not normal? And like yeah. going through the not normal stuff is now like that's the threshold. Like, OK, like, yeah. why haven't I eaten today? Oh, that might be a red flag. Yeah. Let me slow down a little bit. Like that was a huge one was appetite suppression. Like mm. I love food. I like am Same. the <laughs> biggest foodie. Like I love trying every like thing on the menu. Like I literally like I love food. October and November. I just was like, oh, this is a cool diet. Like, I'm not even hungry. This is so cool. Like, I was like actually happy about it. <laughs> it's so and then up. <laughs> it is, but like, you yeah. know what I mean? I was I wasn't like waking up like, okay, what do I have for breakfast today? I was just like, okay, I have I have a shoe. And then like realized halfway through the shoot that I didn't eat breakfast and now it's 4 p.m. and I'm like, oh whoa. <laughs> yeah. well, you know what I mean? And then it hits you and like it, it, yeah, it, that was definitely like a huge thing. And it, it wasn't even of me forgetting to eat. It was like just not being hungry. Mm. So it was my like physiological response of high st levels of stress that it just suppressed it was, the appetite. it was full appetite suppression. I was, it was actually wild. Like now that I look back at it, I was like, wow, that's what that was. So like, yeah, lack of sleep, forgetting. Those are definitely like, yeah. I don't know if you were training or anything during then, but like, because I have the kin background, burnout is like heavily associated with like soreness, lack of recovery, mm. like actual physiological things that don't like go well. Yeah, I, I, guess that was, that. Yeah, I, never, I didn't really think about it, but yeah, I was. Yeah. 
I was popping painkillers fairly regularly. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> a lot of tiger bomb. Yep. A lot of, uh, yeah, but I just thought that I was, cause I think at the same time I also took up, that's also what I was starting to get more and more serious about, uh, learning Muay Thai and boxing. So oh, I was okay. like, Oh, it's, it's, it's new. Like my, my hand is just breaking every time I hit something, <laughs> but like, yeah, I don't know. I never really thought about it, but yeah, I guess it's kind of true. But, yeah. I, but this is why, like, it's, it's just so, I mean, nobody, nobody has asked me this, but if anybody wants to ask me, one of the big things that I would say is just really just check yourself often Yeah. because it'll sneak up on you. You don't see it coming. Yeah. There is no wall. There's no, like, there's, there's actually no wall. No wall. <laughs> it just, you, you, it's, it's weird. It's like, sometimes there is like for, I guess some people, like, I guess people it would have experience to be a it. huge, huge, very obvious thing that yeah. puts you under. But That's like, if, if you're just going through, because like you, you kind of set up certain levels of defense on yourself to where like okay i can handle this i can handle this i can handle this and if it's gradual then you might not notice how exactly how high you're building that mountain mm -hmm. it's like um i don't know if you're an alexis on fire kind of person <laughs> but um, there's a, they have a they have a song called <laughs> uh boiled frogs which is about um how people were getting screwed out of there it's completely irrelevant with what i'm saying but like <laughs> the analogy of it is that the way that the way that you have to boil frogs it's really fucked up, but you have to, you put them, you put them into, you don't put them straight into boiling water because they'll just jump out. Yeah. You have to put, you put them in room temperature water and then you slowly increase, uh, you slowly increase yep. the, uh, the temperature until yeah. they just eventually fall asleep and they just boil to death. Yeah. And like, it's a really fucked up analogy. <laughs> but it's kind of what happens to you. Yeah, you just they don't check themselves. They're yeah. like, oh, I was just getting a little hotter. Oh, I'm getting yeah, sleepy. You're, like, you're, yeah, you if know? you're not checking the temperature, or if you're not checking your vitals, then like eventually it's gonna be too late. Yeah. And then there's just no way out of it. Yeah. And but I mean for us, there's a way you you can you can march your way through it. And like that sounds noble, but like just don't do it. It's just so fucking stupid. Yeah. Like just if you if you if you check yourself and you're getting to a point where like you have to recognize the difference between stress and like I am burning out. Yeah. Because like there are good sources of stress, but it's like, yeah, there, there's a certain like, level of stress is good for you. I think. Yeah. A hundred percent. But like if, if you're like a, a stress junkie and then you, you take on way too much, then that's when you kind of run that sort of risk. And like for people like us, like we, we have that insane brain of just like, oh, I can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it. Yeah. I think it's just because there's like a big lack of structure, right? Like if you're a freelancer, sure, yeah, like yeah. you literally have no, like there's really no structure unless you make it yourself and being like super new at this and totally being like a rookie in the sense, yeah. like, I don't know, like, <laughs> like in my head, it was like shoe for yeah. <laughs> like do as much as you can, because clearly like if I don't know, I was receiving good feedback. So I'm yeah. like, Hey, I'm just going to keep doing more of this and see where it goes. But yeah, definitely like pace yourself on that because yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to like, just like you were saying, like at the beginning where I seem to have this like exponential growth, like mm -hmm. you don't want to plummet. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. I would rather have like a nice, like, yeah, That's maybe exponential, but of. you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing better now? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know when I like triggered back on. I think it was after, um, I was creating the like Bell Let's Talk stuff because it was just for me. There was no, oh, like, right? yeah, like there, I wasn't partnered with any, like I was partnered with neighborhood, but it was the a, idea was mine. Like I didn't get paid to do that. It was just like, oh, I was like, I want to do this and like, the creative side of me came back out and I was like, Oh, I like that. I remember feeling this way. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, so I got like excited about editing again. And yeah. 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 And then when that happened, I was like, okay, good. We're back on track. Mm -hmm. Let me like reevaluate how much time I actually have. And I reached out to like a lot of people about it, mm -hmm. just like telling them how I feel like, is this normal or whatever? Even in the Bella's talk segments, like some people did talk about burnout and I was like, wow, you're so right. Like yeah. I exactly know what you went through because like, I'm just getting out of it. <laughs> so yeah, that was like, that was like finding something that was just a pure internal passion that I wanted to do. And I love that. Yeah. yeah. That like brought me out of it and like a lot of sleep and just like, mm -hmm. no. and actually what I did was, um, 
like a lot of my clients, I told that like I am struggling right now with my health and I mm. need like an, uh, an additional extension on this project. Like I'm willing to offer you whatever discount to like, you know, compensate for the delay. But you were completely honest with them. I was, yeah. Like I said it in a very generic way. I don't think I ever really said like, you know, like <laughs> I <yet>. completely worked <laughs> out and depressed and I, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I didn't go to details, but like I basically just said my health is kind of compromised right now. So mm-hmm. like, I'm just gonna. That's a, that's completely fair. That's off. all you have and to all, say, It's right? not like they're going to be like, oh, like, well. Yeah. It'd be very, it'd be very invasive of them too to be like, well, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, so. I would definitely give yourself like as much time and at least ask for it. Because if you don't, again, yeah. if you don't ask, then you won't get. So. Yeah. I love though that it's like the yeah. thing, the thing that put you into it is also the thing that got you out of it. Isn't that it weird? all comes back to, it all yeah. comes back to the, uh, <laughs> the creative yeah. side of it. Because I do think that like that for me was a similar thing, which was, um, uh, doing the LA video yeah because oh, uh, I bet it did yeah yeah because I, I remember that's so um, true when we were planning the LA trip I, I thought about like trying to work while we were down there but then like it, it, it right away I was just like no nah. yeah let's just let's just go travel let's just go have fun especially like I'm going with two like the biggest dope artists like in the in the GTA <clears throat> uh and like there's no reason for us not to have a good time here yeah and like I'm trying to work less and also like the whole, I just didn't want to deal with the whole thing. I'm just like, uh, whoa, are you, are you traveling for business? And I'm like, no, <laughs> but I actually did it. So don't come for me. <laughs> it was completely for fun. Yeah. And, but yeah, I remember it too. Like when we're, when we're out there, um, first of all, just the whole freedom of being in LA with, you know, uh, a friend who's also, who has that creative mindset who under, who's going to understand we have perfect light right now. We need to stop what we're doing and, and pull our cameras out and who's not going to roll their eyes at you and be like, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it was the exact same thing for me when I, when I, when I started making that video or when I was, when I, when I was, uh, even when we were just out there filming, I was like, Oh yeah, fuck, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like That's I forgot. So like, funny it just, though. like it's literally the same thing, but it's just the amount of it. Yeah. Like you got to do it it's on the, your yeah, own it's not time. To say that, it's not to say that we don't enjoy it when, when we're, you know, out doing what we do. Like it, even if we're doing it for, it, for a work thing, like it's still like, you know, it's work, but we're still, we're still having a good time doing it, but it's just, uh, you know, it, being able to do it on your own time at your own pace is different because when you're working, you're working. Yeah. Like, yes, you're doing something that you enjoy and yes, you're doing something that you, that you're going to have fun doing ultimately. But also, you know, you are, you are doing it in a professional capacity. There's a certain level of expectation, a certain level of professionalism you have to maintain. And it's not necessarily the same as doing something completely for fun. Mm-hmm. So in that way, you can, you can do both. You can have it as a hobby. You can have it as a profession. I think that's one of the hardest things to explain to people that don't really have something like that, where it's just like, Oh, like I, I ultimately just have to tell people that like photography is my hobby. Cause first of all, photo is not my number one video is, but like nobody gets that. And second of all, yes, it's a hobby, but yes, I do it for money, but it's also a hot, it's like, so for some people, it's just such a, it's just such a black and white thing. And for us, it's just not right. Like yeah. we, whether or not I, if, if for whatever reason, uh, I never got a paying job again after today, I wouldn't just sell my cameras and hang it up. I would keep doing it. Mm-hmm. I'd do it for the same reasons that I started doing it. Right. And yeah, so it, actually, like it, that's, that's, I can agree with that too. Yeah. hundred percent. Right? Yeah. So but this still, is like my main source of income too. Yeah. So it's, it is different for me where like, this is my yeah. job and like, I will only selectively, selectively, selectively like pick certain things that I want to shoot for free, right? like in their benefit as well. But like, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's not to say that like you, you won't do it unless you get paid. Oh yeah. 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 Like it's, but like, that's one of the things that's hard to explain to, you know, if you don't, if you don't have that kind of like a, I I feel like for me, that's, that's like a good definition of like what the difference is between a passion project and something that's like strictly professional, Mm -hmm. because if you're passionate about something, you'll do it no matter what. Yeah. And that's, that's how I think that we feel about this, but like, 
that, it, it, that there's like there's so many levels that we can that we can talk we can talk all day about this of just like why <laughs> why we deserve to get paid for what we do <laughs> we talk about that all the time but like yeah but it is <sighs> tough even explaining on that topic because like it is time out of our day but it's also art in a sense yeah like it's it's such a very dynamic yeah. conversation actually but yeah yeah and by no means are we the people that are the ones that are going to speak on it in yeah. the <laughs> most educated way because like we're just we're still trying to figure it out ourselves i think yeah <laughs> But, but that's the fun of it. <laughs> yeah. I think you're doing pretty well, though. Thank I mean, you. <laughs> it's been like, like, it, like I said, like just fucking 20. What the, what the fuck was I doing when I was 22? <laughs> like I was probably still working part time three days a week, just like sitting at home playing like video games and shit. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I don't know what this like internal fire drive is. Like, I don't know where the hell it came from, but I'm just like, I think it's like it has a lot to do with like my I guess my love for like positive psychology and like happiness and stuff and like being aware that what you do literally for the rest of your life like as a job or your career or whatever you stand by like that's it that Mm -hmm. is your life like what else are you doing like yeah if you think about like what what is what your life is or what your life means I like you you can dance around the fact you know, you can make whatever excuse you want, but you're ultimately dancing around the fact that like the thing that you do that creates your livelihood is your life. Yeah. So you, and and you get you to like decide living, that. living, you know, yeah. it's, I know it's all, you know, yeah. cliche quotes and all that stuff, but, but for real, like, yeah, like I love there's what of, I do. Yeah. Period. There's truth to it. Like it's crazy, but, but yeah, it shows. And I am very, very happy for you. <laughs> Thank I'm you. happy to see you shine. Thanks for having me on your podcast. <laughs> Guess number two. This is so fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, right? Like, it's yeah. just nice to just sit down. Because, like, what I was saying, like, in, in uh, when I'm introducing the show, like, when I'm talking about, like, why I want to do the show like this is because, like, what other reason is there for us to just be like, hey, do you want to meet up on Tuesday night and sit down, have a really deep conversation, be like, restraining order. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> but like for some reason, recording it and putting it on the internet makes it okay. Yeah. But like, but anyways, like I, I think that it's 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 a really good thing that you're doing, and I'm very I'm very happy for you. Thank I'm very you. happy that you found your thing so early in life. It's very rare, but it's also scary. Sometimes I think like, oh my god, it always what if, will be. It what if this drive be. goes away? Like, what if I don't? Love I don't it see anymore? that happening for you. You know, I, and yeah. even if it does, you know what? I think you're the kind of person that like, even if this your love for this fizzles out it's only going to be because something else is replacing it That's and true. you're going to pursue that with the same energy <laughs> that you went after this so yeah. like, i'm not really worried about you in that sense yeah and uh yeah so um, where can people find you <laughs> um let's talk about uh yeah our, sure on instagram if you got, any, is if you got my... anything big in the works right ooh, now or? Ooh. well kind of the secret projects i guess um a lot of, a lot of downloads with you <laughs> Because people don't know. It's just because there's so much going on in my brain and like it hasn't actually like come to life yet kind of thing. Yeah. I have two episodes recorded right now and I actually haven't released anything on like Instagram or like nothing yet. So I don't even know about this. You don't know about this. Wow. Um, the series is called Different Breed and there's like athletes and... Are we just, breaking news here? Yeah. This wow. is like a big thing. So it's literally just like, again, passion thing, but... Um, maybe I'll get a sponsor. I don't know. Like it'll, it, I don't know what it's going to do. I, I literally don't know what it's going to do, but it whenever it comes it's, out. it's very like an uninterrupted vibe where like, you know, it's a sit down interview where I'm asking them questions of like, you know, their values and like what sport did in their lives and that kind of mm. stuff. Like what hurdles they've, whatever, kind of like a deep talk with, right, you know, right. professional, either professional athletes or like, you know, people who are respected in their field and like just a bunch of B-roll of them in their environment and mm. just throwing it all together. Where, so where are you planning on launching? Um, definitely Instagram yeah. and probably YouTube. Yeah. I don't really like, I don't keep up with my YouTube any, like at all in any sense. <laughs> so like this might be a good little, like yeah, shout it se- out episode Sorry. series. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't even, I think my YouTube is Entraps Productions. It should be <laughs> like if you search Entraps Productions, we'll, we'll, it should we'll, come up. we'll find you on Instagram. It's and Ensha- is it dot productions? Yeah. That, that, Entraps right? okay. dot prod. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not fraud. <laughs> and the website is www.nshaps.com. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> well, I thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you uh, for having I, me. I appreciate you so much. I'm very happy to call you a friend. Aww. And I hope you'll come back and talk to me again. <laughs> yeah, man. And you'll never get too big for me. And uh, start ignoring me and forget that you know me. So just, <laughs> Maybe you'll be featured on different I've, I've breeds. I've now got audio evidence that we were at one point friends. So when... Um, <laughs> So when, when Shaft blows up and is way too famous for me, I'm just going to sit at home. When I'm on home. the same colder level. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to sit at home in my living room and just like force my cat to sit with me while she eats my arm alive and just be like, look, oh we were friends God. once. <laughs> look, mom. <laughs> okay. Thanks for being here. Goodbye, everybody. The end. Bye, guys. <laughs>